up on the YouTube channel. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Happy payday. Um, first, this was our first payday of December, wasn't it? I think so, because last week was November's, the last of November's. Um, <coughs> before I hit the record button, I was just talking about how like it really doesn't feel like December for some reason. Um, and I was actually talking to Polly about this and I, I was like, oh, what are we gonna talk about on Zoom tonight? And I just decided that we need to have a very real come to Jesus moment. And I, I may just be doing this for myself. I don't know. Maybe nobody else needs to hear this. Maybe it's just me. And that's fine. I'm still going to say it anyway, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat this and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to placate anyone. So if, if you feel like, you know, shots have been fired at you, that's on you. Okay. Because I'm, I'm just like firing shots in the dark here and, and hoping that what I'm feeling, what I'm struggling with, what I'm trying to overcome someone else out there is having the same feeling. Okay. So if, if you feel like, you know, you're, you're the target tonight, um, we're going to have to wrestle with that. And, um, and we're just going to go from there, but I do want to start out on a good note. Can we, can we start out on a, on a positive before we start, you know, firing shots at people? I want to see who is on. I want to see who is on. Okay, cool. Um, so first things first, I want to do our PPA winners and our MVP for December. And you guys, um, I honestly didn't, I was, I was almost kind of like, well, maybe we just won't do it this month. And I don't know why I thought that, like, I don't know why I thought like, well, we just don't need to do PPA and MVP this month. And it's like, no, these are important. Like, even when we're all feeling a little bit run down, we're feeling a little bit lost. We're feeling a little bit like it doesn't even feel like Christmas and we're supposed to be getting ready for Christmas. Like the world is just weird right now. Like, can I get an amen in the chat that the world is just weird and it just feels weird. Um, but at the end of the day, this is important. We have created a family here. You guys, we have created a community and we will continue to celebrate wins regardless of what is happening around us. Okay. And that's a mindset thing. You do the do to get the get. And I, I hate the phrase. I'm, I'm going to say this. So I was talking to Jen the other day. I hate the phrase, fake it till you make it. But at the same time, that is kind of a mindset thing. Like, I, and I'm sorry, it sounds so nasally. My nose is all stuffed up. But that is kind of a mindset thing. Fake it till you make it. Like, and I don't mean, don't, don't be fake, like inauthentic, but like, you may not want to make your bed in the morning, but make your bed even if you don't feel like it. You know what I mean? You might not want to do your five, four, three, two, one, but you do what Cynthia does and you print it off and you check it off. Okay. You fake it till you make it and you do the do to get the get. And a lot of times you just got to suck it up. So while we may not feel like we're in like this big, fantastic celebratory mood, we need to celebrate each other's wins. We need to celebrate our own wins, okay? I think we've gotten out of the habit of changing the chat theme when we get orders because I know there's orders going in and people aren't changing the chat theme. And I know that's a small minor thing, but it's still really important, you guys, for us to celebrate each other. You need to see every single order that goes in as a win because it is. It's growing your business, whether it's in a small way or a huge way, it's growing your business. So without any further ado, um, you guys want me to do PPA first or MVP? I'll just put it in the chat. I'll just shoot your shot and I will, the first one that I see. First one, MVP. Well, Lexi Torres, that's interesting that you said it because you are the MVP. Lexi Torres is our MVP for Stop. November. Stop. Yes. Um, and the reason why you guys is I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this. Um, I'll tell you guys what you're going to get after, after I'm done, because, um, you're all getting the same thing. Uh, so 
here's the thing, the whole fake it till you make it thing. And oh, I can't believe I, could someone come up with a different phrase? Okay. Because I hate that phrase, but at the same time, that's what I'm trying to communicate. Um, so I remember when I first started out in this business, the first retreat that I went to, <coughs> first retreat that I went to was, um, Brittany's retreat in Texas and Chas was there and Lisa was there. Um, and so I'm like meeting all of these people that have just been like faces on the internet and they've been inspiring me for months. Um, and at that time I was a 12 K at that time, but it was very recent. Like I had just become a 12 K. Um, and I did not have a very big team and I had a really powerful team, but at the same time, like we weren't, we weren't mighty in numbers like we are now. And but here's the thing. I sat down with Lisa K. Fuller and keep in mind, Lisa K. Fuller is a millionaire in this business. Nobody has gone 200 K faster than Lisa K. Fuller. And I'm sitting down with her and I'm like racking her brain about, you know, how do you best utilize the comp plan and how do you do all of these things? And, uh, Lisa says, well, what rank are you? I said, oh, I just like hit 12 K a couple months ago. And she goes, are you kidding me? I said, yeah. She goes, I could have swore you were an 80 K. Like you act like an 80 K or you act like a 200 K. Like, I mean, you're on all the zooms and you, you give advice in the chats and you're like active in all the groups. Like I could have swore you were an 80 K. Like you're only a 12 K. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, you're going to be 80 K 200 K. Like, don't know how long it's going to take, but you will because you act like one. That is why Lexi Torres is our MVP. She acts like it. She acts like it. She shows up every single day. She asks the questions every single day. She gives advice to people every single day. She absorbs information every single day. Okay? She may, she may only be a 4K. It doesn't matter. She acts like a 200K. She shows up for her business. She has, she has the vision. She knows she doesn't want to work in her dead-end job for the next 15 years. She wants to do this. She's building an empire. Okay? That is why Lexi Torres is your MVP because she is showing up and doing the do and she will get the get. When is the get going to happen? I don't know. It's different for everyone, you guys. If I could snap my fingers and make every single one of us a 200K, I would do that. But we don't know when that's going to happen. Stephanie Avant could sign the next rock star three days from now, but we don't even know who that person is. Okay, we don't know who the person is who's going to take us to the next level. And it may be us. You may be the one to take yourself to the next level, but you don't know when that's going to happen. However, it will not happen to the people who don't show up. Promise. Promise. Mark my words. If someone stops showing up for their business, they will not progress to the next level. They will progress to the next level when they start to show up, when they don't feel like it, when they're sick, when it's Christmas and you don't want it to be Christmas, when you lose a bonus, when you lose a, a huge promoter on your team. Okay, those are the people, the people who continue to show up and do the do and get the get, those are the ones that are going to progress in their business. So anyway, Lexi, you are a leader at heart, you are a motivator at heart, and you are a 200K at heart. You may not be 200K right now, but you continue acting like a 200K until it happens. And then when that happens, you start acting like a millionaire. You act like the person that you see yourself becoming. PPA. We had two PPA winners for November. Uh, both of them, I can't remember if it was four or five. You guys got to forgive me. I, I looked on the last day of the month. There were two. Um, it was either four or five. It's uh, Rachel Haycox and Mabel. You guys are our PPA winners. You guys were tied. Um, and uh, very proud of you guys. I, I saw both of you pushing to the very, very end of the month. Um, you guys, at the end of the month, you were just like bringing in volume. And that's that's good. That's good. You saw an opportunity. What was that end of the month sale we had? It wasn't a, it was, it was a buy two, get one or something like that. 
Oh, and then this Cyber Monday, we had like multiple sales and I saw you guys just rocking it out during those sales. When an opportunity presents itself, you better be prepared to work it. Okay. We're not in a season right now where everybody is just throwing money around willy nilly. Okay. Let's be real. Let's be real. We are not in a, we are not living in a world right now where people have extra or, or a ton of extra, right? It's the holidays. Last year, people had stimulus checks last year. We we like, it's, it's different. It is different. But when you have an opportunity like cyber Monday, like black Friday, that's when you got to work it and you got to work it. Like there's no tomorrow. Okay. For example, I'm just going to say it before we move on. Um, when they announced there's a new activate flavor coming out, peach mango. I'm so stoked about that. Do you know how many people love those flavors? Like legit. Do you know how many people love those flavors? Peach mango is amazing. Okay. And the camo DFT is coming back. The camo DFT was the best DFT we have ever released. And I will die on that hill every single time. Like I will fall on my sword for that DFT. It is legit. When those two things launch, you be, better be ready to blow it up. Okay. Yes. You need to be prepared to get those products for yourself. I don't know if we'll be able to use credits on it. We probably will on the peach mango. We're not going to be able to use credits on camo. I can guarantee you that you need to be prepared to get the product on hand for yourself, but you also need to be prepared to get it out to your customers. I posted in my customer chat today. Hey, look at these two new things that are coming. Peach Mango Activate, which is our energy mix, and our Camo DFT, which is amazing. Okay, and I just gave a brief explanation of what the Camo DFT was. But you guys, I'm already, I'm already setting it up. So with those launch, people are not like, wait, what is that? What is that? Like they already know. Okay, but anyway, back to Rachel and Mabel. You guys did an amazing job taking advantage of the opportunities that were presented to you, and you guys were our PPA. So uh, Lexi MVP and our two. Um, uh, PPA, you guys are getting, um, so I have two, <clears throat> but I'll let you guys, so message me and let me know which one you want. I have, um, I only have, no, I have, okay. Um, I have the very busy planner. I love these planners. So this is the very busy planner. Um, and, and it's great. So it's August through December of next year. So I have the very busy planner same author. Then I have the family organizer. So this is like meal planning, um, grocery shopping, inspirational quotes, pocket storage, like all, all the stuff. So this is more of like a family organizer and this is more of like a daily planner. So you guys just tell me, send me a message and say, I either want the family organizer or I want the day planner and I will get those to you guys. Um, okay. My nose is so stuffed up, you guys. So I'm sorry that I sound all nasally. But, um, you probably feel like you're being yelled at by someone who's like plugging their nose because um, that's what I feel like. <laughs> um, okay. Are we ready to be totally transparent and then get yelled at? No. Uh, <coughs> I don't know why you guys put up with me really. A one in the chat. If you feel like you're in a funk, I'm not playing. Be honest. Put a one in the chat if you feel like you're in a funk. Life, it's life. It's business. I don't care. I don't care. Your marriage, your kids, your job, your business. I don't know. Your dog. Maybe your dog looked at you the wrong way. You're in a funk. What you are fighting is it's an attack on your mind. Now, whether you want to go down a spiritual route with this or not, I'm just going to be very, very transparent and honest with you. What you are experiencing when you are in a funk is an attack on your mind. Your mind is disorganized. Therefore, your heart is disorganized. You feel like you want to just go hide in the closet. <clears throat> and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be 
before I get into like business type stuff, I'm going to be real. If you feel, because listen, the world is different than, than anything we've ever experienced before. If you feel hopeless, if you feel like you can't hardly even get yourself out of bed, okay, that is something different. That is depression. And you need to go to your doctor. I'm, I'm dead serious. You guys, you probably did not expect this zoom to go this direction, but I need to put this out there. If you feel like you are continually surrounded by a sense of hopelessness, you need to go to your doctor. That is not something that you are, is magically going to go away. Okay. You need to see a doctor because that is something very serious and depression is not something that you mess around with. Okay. And that is coming from someone who has suffered from all kinds of depression, postpartum, manic, all of it. If you feel like you are constantly under a cloud of darkness, you need to go see your doctor. Dead serious. Now, if you just feel like you can't get motivated and get on the right track and you're just feeling a little bit chaotic, like, you know, every day there's just not really a plan, that's a season. I'll be, I'll be totally transparent. There, there are seasons in my business and in my life where I feel like I'm killing it. Like I just have this, <coughs> I have this fantastic routine. Like, and you may be in that position right now. I don't assume that everybody's in a funk. I hope not. Um, but, you know, there are seasons where I feel like I'm just, I'm, I'm on it. You know, I wake up in the morning and I make my bed and I do that. I just like, everything just falls into place. It's like clockwork. You know, I do my follow-ups and I do my reach outs and I, I post in my stories and just everything is just, you know, it's a well-oiled machine. That's a season. Well, when you're not quite sure what the heck you're doing with your life, that's also a season. However, you have to overcome that battle in your mind every single day. One, you have to find the small victories. Okay. Find some things that you can win at. Maybe it's just following up with someone. Maybe it's just getting those steps in your stories. Maybe it's just talking in your stories. Okay. Just find the small win. Do something productive. Do something productive in your home that has nothing to do with your business. Make your bed. Start a load of laundry. Do the dishes that have been sitting in the sink for three days. Okay. Whatever it is, do something productive every single day in your business, in your home, and in your mind. Do something productive for your mind. I want to share this with you guys. Um, it was actually part of my Bible study this morning. <coughs> and it's not scripture. Um, it's actually some neurological research, and I thought it was really, really interesting. So I'm just going to read this to you, and I'm going to try to get through it without coughing. So just bear with me. Um, Dr. Carolyn Reef, Leaf has done some research on the neurological aspects of the mind renewal. Her excellent book, Switch on Your Brain, has technical information and practical tips related to mind renewal. She writes, you cannot sit back and wait to be happy and healthy and have a great thought life. You have to make the choice to make this happen. You have to choose to get rid of the toxic and get back in alignment with God. You can be overwhelmed by every small setback in your life, or you can be energized by the possibilities that they bring. And then it continues. So much of our battle in life takes place in our thought lives. We have many options vying to feed our minds with information, social media, Television, radio, podcast, books, daydreams can shape our thinking towards the world <coughs> and towards God. We must be careful with what we allow in and out of our thoughts. Is that 
Did that track? Did any of that track with you guys? Give me a two if you picked up anything out of that. Like whether you're just nodding in agreement or you're like, whoa, mind blown, never thought of that. <coughs> and I understand that not all of us share the same faith in here. Just keep, you know, in mind, I feel like this is applicable to everyone. So then it goes on, it continues. Dr. Leith tells us thoughts are real. Physical things that occupy mental real estate. Thoughts are real. Physical things that occupy mental real estate. Moment by moment, every day, you are changing the structure of your brain through your thinking. When we hope, it is an activity of the mind that changes the structure of our brain in a positive, normal direction. Give me a four in the chat if that resonated at all. What you are putting into your brain and what you are thinking matters. It matters. And I know it sounds cliche. And I know it's not as... <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me, you guys. <clears throat> it always gets worse at night. <clears throat> I know it's not as easy as it sounds. So I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting you to go forth and conquer the entire battle of your mindset just by me reading a couple sentences. Okay, that's not the point. But we have to understand that the space that we give in our mind to certain things matters physically in our brain the thing that we feed with our thoughts will begin to take up more and more and more and more space you cannot expect to just wake up happy tomorrow it doesn't work that way you cannot just wake up and expect to have a booming business tomorrow it doesn't work that way you have to feed your mind with the things that matter. Things that I have noticed personally for me, and I'm just being fully transparent with you guys, I have not been plugging into Zooms as much as I typically do. And whatever, you guys, I have all the same stuff that everybody has, okay? My kids drive me nuts. I've got to get them into preschool and I cannot find an outlet to do that. Okay, so I have three toddlers at home and two of them are ready for preschool and I have no access to that right now. Okay, so I'm trying to homeschool. I, I have laundry that's overflowing. I have a sink that has dishes in it. I have a Christmas tree that is not decorated. I have, I have all of it. I have all of it. I have a boss in my day job who expects more from me than I'm physically capable of doing. I have all of it. I have empathy for every situation in which we are all struggling with. Okay, I have empathy and sympathy for all of it. I get it. However, what I am putting into my mind has a direct reflection of what happens during my day. And one of the big things that I know I have been struggling with personally, I haven't been plugging into Zooms as much. And if you guys have been with me for any length of time, you know that when I left my business in October of 2000, what was that? 2019? Yeah. So in October of 2019, I abandoned my business. And I think that's why it's so hard for me to see so many of of our team kind of come and go. Well, not so many. I mean, it's not like it's a majority, but like seeing people come and go in this business hurts my heart probably more than others because that's what I did. And I know a lot of people don't come back from that. I came back from it. Um, and, and I had, you know, I had a moment where I had to wake up and pull my head out of my butt and get with it. But the number one thing that helped me to really start to utilize this business in a way that mattered and made big impact was being on Zooms. 
So those of you who are plugging into Zooms, you know, every day, every other day, like I'm very proud of you for doing that. You are putting good stuff in your brain. Um, and, and I just haven't been doing that as much lately. And it's kind of like, I'm having that moment where I'm like, Oh, that might have something to do with this funk that you feel like you're in. So one, are you plugging into zooms? Um, two, I do so much better. And this is just me personally. So hopefully I'm just giving you some ideas right now. I do so much better when I write my goals down in the morning. So, and, and very specific goals. So, so whether I achieve all of them or not, um, I do so much better if I sit down every morning and say, this is what I'm going to accomplish today. I am going to sign a new customer. I am going to do three reach outs. I'm going to send out a mini experience, whatever it is, I'm going to get my laundry done. Um, all of those different things. I do so much better if I write them down the day up. Um, you know, I like to have a plan for my week, but I, there's just something about waking up in the morning and sitting down and saying, this is what I'm going to do today. Like, this is my focus today. Um, it's, it's very, very helpful. And I am way more likely to accomplish those things if I write them down in the morning and make the mental plan to accomplish it. Um, and so that's something that really helps me. And, and if I don't sit down and write my day, my day gets a little bit chaotic um, and stuff happens, you guys, it just does like stuff happens. I had this grand grandiose plan of getting caught up on everything today. And then I remembered that both boys had doctor's appointments that I had completely forgotten about. So that changed my day and you have to adapt. You have to learn how to pivot, but you will be so much better if you give yourself the opportunity to become organized. Okay, you may feel like you're spiraling out of control right now, but I just urge you take a deep breath, stop the spiral for five minutes and just make a plan. I don't care if you want to make a plan for the next hour. If that's all you have the capacity for, do that. Make a plan for the next day. Make a next plan for the next week. Okay, just, just scope out and get a little bit organized because that's, those are the type of actions that will stop the spiral. Okay. But again, again, break it down. If you feel like you are in a funk, do these things, do something for your business every day, do something for your household, whether you're a mom, whether you're a wife, whether you're living alone, I don't care. Do something for your household. Okay. Clean house, clean mind. Fully believe that dead serious. Clutter in your life equals clutter in your mind. Promise. That's scientifically proven. And then do something for your mind. Okay, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a Bible study, whether it's just sitting in silence, I don't know what those things are. Do something for your mind. We use that word self-development and we've used it so much that I think we've, we've got to stop using it because people are like... <laughs> they're sick of hearing it. Uh, <coughs> but I remember back like the first time that I heard someone in this business really talking about it. I don't even remember who it was. Um, they talked about it in the sense of do something for yourself. They didn't use the word like self-development. <laughs> <coughs> they just said, do something for yourself. Do something for your sanity. Do something for your soul. And they gave very, very simple explanations like stand in the shower and just stand there and think about nothing. Go get in your car and listen to really, really loud heavy metal if that's what you're into. Okay. And, and, or <coughs> read a chapter in a book that is not a self-development book. Just read a chapter in a book. Do you guys want to know my, my dirty secret? I am obsessed with twilight. I bet you would have never guessed that. I'm like legit obsessed with it. Like I, I watch the movies on replay in my home. Like it drives Kenneth nuts. Like he will come home and I will be folding laundry. 90% of the time there's a twilight movie on. I read the books in rotation. 
I know it's super weird. Like I, I just like right now, I think I'm reading Eclipse for like the 600th time, but like, uh, don't even get me started. Okay. Don't get me started on teams. That's not why we're here. Okay. If you want to talk about that, we can talk about that. Like, I like you guys, it's ridiculous. I'm like super active on the twilight Reddit subs. Okay. Very active on twilight TikTok. Okay. It's a problem, but it's a sanity thing. It's a comfort thing. It is a comfort thing for me. Okay. So, so is sitting down and reading 10 pages of a twilight book that I've read 500 times doing anything for my business, not directly, but at the same time, it's a comfort thing. It it helps with my sanity. I think sometimes we become so hyper-focused on, I got to grow my business. I got to grow my business. I got to grow my business. I got to grow my business that we actually lose sight of the fact that like we are a person and nothing is going to grow unless we take care of our person. And that's different for all of you. Some of you need to take care of your body. Okay. Some of you may need to take care of your body. I get in these really weird habits where I will, um, well, it's not super weird because I, I have adult, I have ADHD. So <clears throat> I will go, I will go like a month and be super, super healthy. And then I will go into a month where it's like, all I want to do is drink uh, Coca-Cola and, and eat French fries. Okay. So I have this like ebb and flow, but here's the reality. If you're not taking care of your body, you're, you're setting up a roadblock for yourself. You are setting up a roadblock for yourself. If you're not taking care of your body, same, if you're not taking care of your mind, if what you need to do for your sanity is sit down with a bowl of popcorn and watch a comfort movie, do that. Am I telling you to do that every single night of the week? No, you, you still need to do things that are like developing you outside of, you know, vegetation, but do the things that are good for your sanity. Do something for yourself. Stop looking at the word self-development as, oh, I need to listen to a, you know, fortune 500 podcast and bore myself to death. No, Do something for yourself. What is yourself telling you that you need right now? If you need five minutes of silence and you are blessed to have a a partner to support you in raising your children, give those kids to them and say, deal with this. I need five minutes and take the five minutes. There's nothing wrong with that. If you need to go to sleep at 7 p.m., go to sleep at 7 p.m. If you need to wake up at 5 a.m. and go on a walk or do a Bible study or stand in the shower for an extra 15 minutes, do that. Do something for yourself to make yourself whole. If you are not whole, there is no possible way that your business is going to grow. If you are not whole, there's no possible way for your business to grow. And I feel like a lot of times that's where we find our struggle. We have set up roadblocks for ourselves. And instead of dealing with the roadblock, we're driving five miles to the left and then five miles to the right to try and figure out how to get around it. Instead of just looking at the roadblock going, okay, how do I move this thing? How do I move this thing? Tell me in the chat. I want you guys to be transparent with me. What do you feel like is your roadblock right now? Is it something mental? Is it something physical? Is it something spiritual? What's a roadblock? Like just, just speak life into it. Because if you, if you acknowledge it, then you can address it. Okay. What, what are you feeling with? I feel, um, I feel like I am kind of running on empty. Um, and I, I have a lot of people who need me and until I replenish my own reserves, I don't have a lot to give. So I need to figure out what I need physically, mentally, emotionally. Like I need to figure out 
what I need to do to replenish my stores. Okay. Cause I'm like giving and I have nothing to give. Okay. So that's something that I'm struggling with. I'm being transparent with you guys. I know leadership always tells us never vent down, but I also feel like you guys need to understand that like I'm a real person. Okay. Um, I, I take my, very, I take my business very seriously. I take my, I take my network very seriously. Like this is, this is my future. This, this business has changed our lives. I do not take this lightly. Okay. I show up every single day, regardless of how I feel. But also I think we need to acknowledge that we are human. We are human. So of, of all the things that we put in the chat, I want you to look at yours and I want you to look at that roadblock head on and go, okay, how do I, how do I move it? And, and I'm not saying that it'll disappear. I'm not saying that it will disappear. I just want you to look at it head on and say, what can I do right now to give myself enough to push past this a little bit, even if it's just a little bit. And I'll tell you what, you know, you may feel like you don't have anything left to give, but if you feel like, you know, you're failing at home and you have a stack of dishes that's a mile high, I recommend going and doing those dishes. I know you're tired. I get it. But I'll tell you right now that if you wake up tomorrow and those dishes are still there and it's the first thing you see in the morning, it's going to start your day that way. Promise. Promise. I know you're tired, but go do the dishes. I know you're tired, but fold a load of laundry. Again, do something for your business, do something for your household, and do something for yourself every single day. Don't allow things to build up in your life, in your mental life, in your spiritual life, in your physical life. Do not allow things to compound in a negative way. And the comments were coming in so fast that I couldn't, I was just picking up on some every once in a while. So I'm sorry, I'm not hyper-focusing on people. And, you know, again, you guys, like I said at the very beginning of this, there is a, there is a difference between depression and a funk. Okay. Like we all, we all need to grasp that very seriously. There's a difference between depression, literal depression that needs to go see a doctor and being in a funk. Okay. But I'm just telling you that, you know, there, you, you still have to, in some cases, suck it up buttercup and still do life. You still have to. You still have to. And I never want us to, you know, it's, it's a fine line between understanding, you know, what you need. But I just know for me, you know, if I, if I wake up in the morning and, and I, my house is a disaster, that's how I start my day. And it's never good. So as tired as I am, I will give it my best effort to get everything back to, you know, ground zero so that when I wake up the next day, I'm not immediately worrying about the mold growing on the mac and cheese pot that's been there for a week, right? Like nobody wants a science project in their kitchen sink. Okay. It, it's just, you know, you can't, you can only restart the dryer so many times. Uh, <laughs> you can only restart the dryer so many times. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I am, I'm, I'm just going to, I think I want you to walk away from this zoom and I want you to genuinely think about what's going on in your life and how you're handling it. Are you handling it well? Are you handling it poorly? Are you in survival mode? Are you allowing yourself to be in survival mode, even though you probably could start to overcome some of these things? Like, just be honest with yourself. I don't know. We all have different stuff, you guys. I am not a guru. 
Okay. If anything, Polly's the social worker. So I, but I'm just being real. Assess what's going on. Look at the situation and head on and say, do I need to suck it up buttercup and go do my damn dishes? Or do I need to suck it up buttercup and call my doctor to ask my for help? Or do I need to suck it up buttercup and just go to bed? Okay, like assess the situation and be honest with yourself. Have an adult conversation with yourself, assess the situation, take a deep breath and make a decision that will move you one step forward right now or in in this particular moment. I don't mean like right now, but what's the next best thing? What's the next right thing? Assess the situation that you're in, assess your mind, assess how you are handling it and adjust as necessary. If you are not handling it well, why are you not handling it well? Is there something that you can do that would help you handle it better tomorrow? Whether it's your business, whether it's your life, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your kids, whatever. Is there something that you could do to help you handle it better tomorrow and assess the situation? I'm going to reread that portion of this because I, I actually think I found it quite helpful when I read it this morning, even though my day went a little bit crazy due to the doctor's appointments that I forgot about. Whoops. Uh, but I did find it very helpful when I was reading it. And then I just want you guys to go and I want you to assess. If you need me, I'm here. But as always, I am not a mind reader. I am not a mind reader. And there are hundreds of you and one of me. And I love each of you individually and dearly. But it is like having a hundred people who need me and I don't know that they need me. So it's, a, it's especially devastating when someone chooses to let their business collapse. And I had no idea that there was an issue. I don't know unless you tell me. I don't know unless you tell me. <coughs> I am never too busy. It may take me a little bit to get back. I may have to, you know, take a step back and assess the situation for myself. But I don't know unless you speak up. And I promise you that islands are not successful in this business. I don't know a single person who is successful in this business who isolated themselves and flourished in that. Nope. Isolation will never lead to success. Isolating yourself, isolating what you're trying to overcome, isolating your mind. You will never grow in this business by isolating yourself but you have to be willing to advocate. You have to be willing to reach out. <coughs> and the other thing is that I will say about that before we finish this up and I read these, when you're advocating for yourself, please be kind of specific. Like don't just, <coughs> um, pardon my French, but like, don't just shit on your leaders. <laughs> Like, don't be a seagull. Don't just like fly in shit on everything and then leave. Like, if you genuinely are advocating for yourself, have a conversation and say, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm wanting to overcome. This is what I'm doing to overcome that. Um, you know, can you give me your insight? Have you ever felt this way? What have you done in this situation? Like, don't just expect your leader to know that like when you come to dump on them that you want help. Because I'll be completely honest. I know people and I'm not saying they're on our team, but like I know people who literally just want to like dump their issue, but they don't want to fix the issue. Like real talk. Like they just want to like spew their issue on someone, but they have no desire to fix the issue. And 
that's very hard for leadership to decipher unless you're clear on that. So if you're advocating for yourself, please be transparent about the fact that you are advocating for yourself and let leadership know that you are seeking help for whatever it is that you're trying to overcome. Don't be a seagull. Um, that's an inside joke in our family, but I'm not going to tell it to you guys because I don't, I don't want karma to get me on that one. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read this one more time. Dr. Caroline Leaf has done research on the neurological aspects of mind renewal. If you're curious about the whole mind renewal thing, Google it. Her excellent book, Switch on Your Brain, has technical information and practical tips related to mind renewal. She writes, you cannot sit back and wait to be happy and healthy. You have and have a great thought life. You have to make the choice to make this happen. You have to choose to get rid of the toxic and get back in alignment. You can be overwhelmed by every small setback in life or you can be energized by the possibilities that they bring. And then it continues. Thoughts are real physical things that occupy mental real estate. Moment by moment, every day, you are changing the structure of your brain through your thinking. When we hope, it is an activity of the mind that changes the structure of our brain in a positive and normal direction. And then the person who wrote this Bible study continued, and I'm just going to read this part because I thought it was very powerful. <clears throat> My prayer is that you literally change the structure of your brain in a more positive and hopeful direction. My prayer is that we literally change the structure of our brains in a more positive and hopeful direction. I am always proud of you guys. <laughs> I am always tremendously grateful and thankful for what we have built together. We are not done building. We won't be done building until every single person we come in contact with is a millionaire, frankly. And I don't say that lightly. I mean it. And I never want you to feel that you are at the bottom of a well without a rope. You have lots of ropes. Just yell and I will throw one down. Go forth, assess the situation, reach out where is needed, and let's have a better day tomorrow. Let's transform our minds so that tomorrow we can walk forward in a way that helps keep our sanity and makes us better for it, and in turn, makes our family better our community better, our world better. And as cliche as that sounds, I absolutely mean it. I'm proud of you guys. I love you guys. I am always here for you. Have an amazing night. And if you need to message me, send me a message. Talk to you later. Okay. <clears throat>